it over now to our South Jersey sports segment in the 8 o'clock hour. That's Mike McGarry from the Press of Atlantic City. You'll find out about the games last night. And, Michael, this Middle Township unit game was supposed to be close. What happened? Well, what happened was uh, Buna went. What happened was Buna went down there and uh, ran the football well and uh, scored on their first possession and, and ended up winning thirty-two nothing. Yeah, sometimes you can really uh, dictate the tone right in the first quarter, right? And I, I know that you, in your lead, you put it very creatively, right about how the high school game has gone to an aerial assault, but not with Jonathan Caputo's Chiefs. Yeah, I mean, Buna has, as I wrote in uh, the press today, uh, some high school football teams throw 10 times on one possession. Buna has thrown 10 times all season. And uh, they're a sports writer on deadline stream. They run the football, keep the clock moving. The game last night took less than two hours. So if you're on deadline, uh, Buna Regional is a team every sports writer wants to see. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. And Luke Santiago says, hey, I don't need to throw in a lot for us to be successful. I mean, that, that stat is hilarious because they're they're 2-1 and one now, and his stats are 4 for 10, 1 of 2 for 26 yards. Uh, but he did have a touchdown last night. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he threw. if you're going to throw the ball twice, it's good that one of them, 50%, is for a touchdown, basically. So, And on that first drive, scrambled around in the backfield, found some time to throw and hit Maurice Davis for a touchdown, 26 yards to put Buna up 7-0. The other thing that's impressive about Buna, Luke Santiago at quarterback, three-year starter, has the ability to run the football, make big plays, and Buna has a lot of talent at the running back position. Brian Spellman, a senior, uh, Jerron Smithbay, a sophomore, Samir Garrison, a freshman, all big games last night, and when you've got a Great freshman running back like that in Garrison, a great sophomore running back in Smith Bay, chances are you're going to keep running the ball in the future. So don't look for Buna to be thrown at 30 times a game anytime soon. Right, no doubt. Mike McGarry with us for our South Jersey Sports Report segment in the 8 o'clock hour. We're talking Buna and Middle Township football last night. The Chiefs go down, efficiently run the football, rough up middle, win 32 nothing in Cape May Courthouse. Now, it's not just Buna's offense that was standing out last night, Mike, according to your story, too, that there was a big key first possession play from the Buna defense or stop from the Buna defense, and you mentioned a few people there. Yeah, I mean, when I look at the Buna regional defense, I look at this junior defensive lineman they have, Antonio Thompson, and I really feel he's one of the more underrated players in South Jersey. And I always feel funny when I say that because you know, why is he underrated? Because we don't give him enough attention. So it's probably on me. You know, i got to do a better job of giving this kid attention. But he was a constant presence in the Middle Township backfield. Comes off a big season last year. Antonio Thompson, I think he's one of the more underrated players in South Jersey, what he's able to do for the Buna defense. I guarantee you there's somebody out there saying, he keeps saying Antonio Thompson and PT hasn't cut in and said no relation, so I'll I'll throw that in there. No <laughs> no relation. All right, so the Chiefs get to two and one, right? And now they're uh, right back in the hunt for another South Jersey Group One or a South Jersey Group One uh, playoff spot and potential title. Right. I mean, they, the last year they uh, went ten and one, I believe. They got to the South Jersey Group One semifinals. Great season. Uh, Kind of big things were expected from them also this season, but they opened up the year with a 35 nothing loss to Gateway Regional, who is also a South Jersey Group 1 competitor. So that game kind of raised some questions about Buna, but with back-to-back impressive wins over Haddon Township and, uh, and Middle Township last night, Buna's kind of reestablished themselves. And, you know, in talking to Coach Jonathan Caputo and some of the Chiefs last night, they feel... Maybe that 35 nothing loss to uh, Gateway was kind of exactly what they needed. You know, shook them out of any complacency, let them know that this is a new year. And uh, like you said, they return home, play their first home game of the season next Friday night against Lower Cape May. Right, and that's not only the first home game of the season. It's, it's first home activity, like even including the scrimmages. Like their scrimmages were away. I mean, they're, they're really looking forward to getting back to their home field. Right, absolutely, because all they've done is uh, practice at home. They had two away scrimmages and then three road games, so that's a long time, uh, you know, three, four weeks of the season here, and they have a great student section out there at Puna that will be able to see their uh, their classmates play on their home field for the first time this season. 
All right, talking about great student sections, Mainland always brings them out in droves, right? And Mainland last night played Cherry Hill West. Uh, what did you hear about the Mustangs' performance, and what were your thoughts on what the Mustangs were able to do? Well, a big win for Mainland last night to improve to 3-0, and and I had talked to Coach Chuck Smith earlier in the week for a, for a column I wrote on the Mainland Regional Football Team and kind of what they've done off the field as far as some nice things they've done off the field uh, as a team. You know, I think this is first time Mainland is 3-0. and you got to go back to 2008 or 2009, that Brett Caprio team that won the South Jersey Coop 4 title at 12-0. and Last night, they got a great game from a sophomore quarterback, Cole Campbell. Uh, the senior starter, Zach Graziato, is in concussion protocol. So Cole Campbell, as a sophomore, starts his first game, throws two touchdown passes, and leads them to a nice win over a uh, pretty good Cherry Hill West team. I guarantee you there's some Ocean City fans out there saying, what's he talking about mainland first? We shut out Bridgeton. And that really, that shutout is the story with Ocean City right now. I mean, that stat is amazing what they've done in their first three games. Yeah, absolutely. Ocean City, you know, they're 3-0. and uh, And the three teams they beat have a combined record of 1-6. and six, But yet they've outscored those three teams 126-0. to zero. I don't care who you're playing. If you're three and zero and you haven't given up a touchdown all season, you're pretty good. So uh, all this reminds me of kind of the late '90s, early 2000s when Mainland and Ocean City were powers, uh, and uh, we have that again this year. Ocean City three and zero, Mainland three and zero, and you can't tell me that fans of both teams and even players on both teams aren't kind of have one eye looking forward to that first week in November when those teams meet. You know, always a big game in any sport when Ocean City and Mainland play. Absolutely. The Ocean City Mainland rivalry is always alive, even if they, I, I used to say on the television, like if they were having a chess match against each other, it would be intense and heated. You might see a, the, you might see an elbow break out, you know? <laughs> exactly. The debate club uh, would be physical games. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, Mike McGarry's with us, Press of Atlantic City, as we go through Friday night. That was week two last night. Uh, Pleasantville picks up a big win, and Pleasantville uh, 45-6. Now, Lower Cape May, you also consider the opponent, but a nice game from Pleasantville and the Greyhounds. Yeah, Keon Henry with a with a great game. The, wide, the senior wide receiver for them. The freshman quarterback, Marlon Henry, continues to do what he does well. Uh, Pleasantville improves 2-1, and, one, and uh, you know, they bounced back. They had last week off. They had lost the week before against Adam. So Pleasantville getting back on the right, right track with a nice win last night down at Lower Cape May. Okay, and then uh, Holy Spirit was on our air last night. The Spartans, you heard the game right here on 97.3 ESPN. I had somebody ask me during the day, Camden Catholic, they usually bring people in. They're pretty good, right? And I said, yeah, but I really think Holy Spirit's better. I didn't know they were 55-13 to 13 better, but boy, Spirit, especially in the second quarter, they just uh, seemed to score at will. Yeah, Holy Spirit really continuing to roll. If you look at their offense, we've talked about it on several studies, the talent at the skill positions, and last night especially, that kind of dynamic duo at running back of Elijah Gray and Patrick Smith, boy, that's tough to be. Both of them had big games last night, and when they're both running well, uh, Holy Spirit is a tough team to, st- to stop. The so Holy Spirit, you know, they're 2-1 and one right now. They'll go out to Hamilton next Saturday, an old time Cape Atlantic League game, Fun. Holy Spirit at Hamilton. Hamilton one and two. They've got the great running back Jaden Abrams, but they kind of lost a tough one to Shawnee, thirty-one eight last night. So Holy Spirit will take that running back duo of Patrick Smith and Elijah Gray, which is really, really tough on teams out to Hamilton next Friday night. That's next Friday night in Hamilton against the Blue Devils. I love whoever writes up the agate or whoever put the copy together. Uh, I love that they threw in that Patrick Newman was 7-for-7 seven for, seven for PATs. Give the kicker a little love, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's our, our, our part-time is doing a great job uh, collecting that information. And they're always on the uh, uh, lookout for a great kicking performance. That's a Guy Gargan special from way back. <laughs> Get a little love for those kickers. All right, on the flip side, as we talk about some of the wins, some of the teams that – Fell last night include Vineland and uh, Lenape uh, 34-7 over Vineland. A tough game for the Fighting Clan. As, you know, they started out okay, and, and now they've dropped a few. Yeah, you know, they, they 
opened up with a solid performance against Williamstown, then they beat Atlantic City, and then they lost to Lenape last night. I really think last night's game says more about Lenape than it does Byland. Byland's a tough team. I still consider them to be a South Jersey Group 5 playoff contender, but you look at Lenape, convincing win over Byland last night. You combine that with a 20-7 to win over St. Augustine last Friday night. You've got a Lenape team that is really kind of a, you know, a, a team to watch. And a Lenape team that plays Williamstown next Friday night, showdown of South Jersey Group 5 contenders. The winner of that game will emerge as the team to beat in South Jersey Group 5 this season. Uh, a couple more with Mike McGarry from Friday night games. Oak Crest uh, struggling against Highland, 43 nothing in that game. Yeah, Oak Crest kind of, you know, we knew this was going to be a rebuilding season for Oak Crest. They had a lot of seniors last year. Uh, they were off to a one and two start, so they'll look to get back on track next week. Of course, Highland has an outstanding running back in Johnny Martin. We him up at Rutgers uh, earlier this year when, when St. Joe beat them 34 21. Highland's a very good team, South Jersey Group 4 contender. So just like, you know, I thought the Lenape Byland game said more about Lenape than Byland, last night Highland probably showed how good they are in South Jersey Group 4 and which Shawnee they're a contender in that group. And then Washington Township 8 nothing over Atlantic City. That 8 nothing actually shows growth in Atlantic City probably because if it was the same matchup last year, it could be a lot to nothing against Atlantic High. Yeah, Atlantic City's improved uh, off last season. They got the early opening season win against EHT, and then they kind of got tough back-to-back losses to uh, Vineland and Washington Township. And, of course, now Atlantic City staring at a tough game next Saturday. They've got to travel out to Hamilton to play St. Joe, who's number one in our Press Elite 11. For Washington Township, they get a much-needed win. They had come into Atlantic City at 0-2, so they get that first win. You know, every team feels better about themselves. Uh, nobody wants to be O oh, and whatever at this time of year. You get three, four weeks into the season. You get that first win. You feel a lot, a lot easier to practice on Monday after a win than it is when you got an O oh, four uh, on your record. No doubt. Mike McGarry with us, Press of Atlantic City at AC Press McGarry.